was apprehended soon after he fled chicago, in october ninety three, following the conclusion of the world's fair he was arrested in boston and eventually suspected of murdering his assistant, benjamin pitezel, and two of pitezel's children interestingly, while on the run, holmes had misled pitezel's wife as well collecting the insurance money for his former assistant and living with his widow and three of her children Police eventually discovered the body of one of the murdered children, and this discovery led to Holmes' arrest. Following his arrest, Holmes claimed to have killed more than 200 people in his murder castle. He ultimately confessed to murdering Pitezel and two of his daughters. And experts now believe he may have, in fact, killed as few as nine, still a significant number, but not the scores the killer claimed. While in captivity, awaiting his trial and sentencing, Holmes authored an autobiography, Holmes' own story, in which he wrote, I could not help the fact that I was a murderer. No more than the poet can help the inspiration to sing. The most famous literary work on Holmes, however, is the best-selling non-fiction novel The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, which was published in 2003. After a brief incarceration, Holmes was hanged for his crimes in Philadelphia in 1896. His body is buried in Holy Cross Cemetery outside the Pennsylvania city. What happened to the murder castle? Despite Holmes' arrest and execution, rumors have persisted for more than a century that the serial killer bribed authorities to avoid punishment. The theory suggests that Holmes was allowed to escape and that officials hanged another man. In response to these rumors, in March 2017, Holmes' descendants, who live in Delaware, petitioned to have his remains exhumed so that they could undergo DNA testing. The results concluded the remains did in fact belong to Holmes. Meanwhile, the fate of the site of the killer's exploits is also shrouded in intrigue. With Holmes, allegedly, safely ensconced in prison, in 1895, the murder castle was gutted by fire, after witnesses reportedly saw two men entering the building late one night. The building itself remained standing until 1938, when it was torn down. The site is now occupied by the Englewood branch of the U.S. Post Office.